Did you really have any idea until you finally started fully practicing and playing what Jamal could do? Uh, for, for our staff, probably I was the only one, uh, just because I had seen him play uh, there on the grassroots circuit that he played on, which was the Under Armour circuit. Uh, and you saw a guy who is a basketball player. You know, it's, he's a guy that can guard multiple positions. He's a guy that can play multiple positions on the offensive end. And um, you know, I think for us, whenever we're recruiting backcourt guys, you always want someone that can create for themselves, but first and foremost, create for others. You know, because of what we're going to have here and the, the type of guys that we're going to have and the type of players that, that have the type of dreams that they do, you need guys that can you know, create for other people first, but are also a threat um, that they have to be guarded. So are you, along the way, are you kind of, as he starts to get healthy, are you like nudging people saying like, no, you're no, I mean, see this kid? I mean, no, I mean and, and we all watched him eventually, you right. know, with the technology now that you have with, um, you know, with Synergy and the, all the other types of ways that you can watch, you know, grassroots or high school basketball. We all co-signed on Jamal. We all were excited about Jamal, and I don't think anyone here is surprised that Jamal is having some, some good moments and flashes. I think he's aware, as well as everybody else, that it, this is still a process for him, and part of that is getting him the best shape of his life, which has been hard because he has been hurt. Um, and we talked even a little bit the other day. I mean, this is, has been a really good time for Jamal. When he got fully healthy, was right there at the beginning of December when we went into that period where we had practices, game on Saturday, practices, game on Saturday, and, and that allowed him to, to put in some extra work. Um, was at the end of the semester where you know, classes were kind of tailing off and you just had to study and he could put in some extra work which he did and now you kind of get into a different rhythm with the, the conference play and you're going to have a day off on Wednesday which you need to take advantage of have a really good practice like he did we did on a Thursday and now you get into game prep again uh, on a Friday or or a Monday you know, having whatever day the game is so uh, I think we're excited for him but but I think that we still are just seeing the beginning and, and scratching the surface of what he can become. Joe, where are you guys at overall as a team in the developmental curve of you know forming the team, the process? Yeah, I think it's it's the same thing that we always say. I think we want to be our best version tomorrow night, uh, and that's that's basically who we're striving to become today in practice, and both as individuals and, and collectively, we need to be our best today, and then carry that over to, to tomorrow. I think Coach is really working with the guys with their roles and making sure that he's continuing to be clear with them, that they're continuing to understand what is being asked of them, uh, and then also that he is clear with, with the team on how he sees our best version um, tomorrow night, then Tuesday night, then Saturday, and, and you know, so on and so forth as the weeks go on. As it is here, the, these parts of our teams change. They evolve. Guys step up. Maybe some guys step back for a little bit. And for us, the strength of who we are is, is that we do have depth and we have guys that are continuing to work. And I think you see that with a guy like Jamal. I think you see it with a guy like Ashton. You see it with a guy like Emmanuel that, you know, have had some periods where they were, you know, so, so, so. And then other times they were, they were okay. And now they're, playing really well. Um, I think the, the great part for us and our coaching staff thinks is, okay, who's, who's going to be the, the guy that steps up today in practice or who's going to be the guy that steps up tomorrow in the game? And that's the exciting part about the process, as you ask, is you know, you're just kind of waiting to see who's next. So what, what factors have led to uh, Ashton's productivity on offense, especially the last couple of games? Uh, I, I think it, the, the number one thing is he's continued to work. Um, as with a lot of the guys on our team, this group of guys loves to work. Uh, these guys came here because they knew that it was going to be a process. They knew that they were going to have the access to, to get in the gym 24 hours a day. They knew that they were going to have the facilities. The blueprint has been here for guys before them. Um, and the guys that come here are like Ashton. They know that they aren't a finished product. And 
they're coming here to work. They're coming here to work every day. They're coming here to be coached. They're coming here to work against other good players. And Ashton, from the time that he stepped foot on campus, has embraced that. Uh, I think someone even asked the other day on, on the, the podcast that, that we do with, with you know TJ and on Coach's website, you know, what's the, the best battle that we have? And it's Ashton and Manny. And I don't think it's any surprise that those two guys are starting to go in a direction of, you know, of positive playing time and, and, and productive minutes and, and efficient minutes. Um, but Ashton, you know, is a guy who's worked. He works by himself. He works, you know, with other people. Um, he's a guy that takes advantage of all the coaches here, Coach Cal, Coach Payne, Coach Barbie, myself. Um, he's a guy that loves to watch film. He's a guy that's trying to always learn. And I think that that comes from having Shea Alexander go through what he went through last year. And now he says, okay, all right, if that guy did it and, and look at where he is, I want to be where he is, much like the 10 other guys in that locker room. Um, so I think for, for Ashton, he's, he's a guy that's seen it work, and he's following the footsteps of uh, a group of other guys that they wanted to do the same thing. Ashton is starting Kind of let it fly a little bit every now and then on the jump shot. I don't know about, you know, a little <laughs> I was going to say, that, not, not a lot, but every, you know, a little more, it seems like. And maybe a little more confidently. Um, is that what you guys are wanting him to do just to get him comfortable? I know he's not, that's not his strength. Yeah, I mean, I don't know that we're wanting Ashton to let it fly. You know, I mean, I, I think that we want him to be confident. I know that we want him to be ready to, to shoot balls. Um, but like I said you know, earlier, Guys that play here have to be able to keep teams honest. I think you've seen, we've seen teams in the past lay off of guys, and what it's done is it's it's clogged the paint and it's you know really bogged us down offensively. And, and I think for us to be our best, you know, and most efficient, and, and so does obviously the rest of our staff. We've got to have five guys on the floor that are threats, and whether that's Ashton driving to create for others, him stepping into to a jump shot and shooting one confident. Um, that's got to be who he is, not only for here, but, but the next level as well. And, and that's something that we talk about daily with, with him and with everybody else. He's had 19 steals in the last four games, I believe. What does, how does that number play on your mind, and why is he so good at that? Yeah, I mean, that's the guy that you want on your team, you know, that, that you want disruptive, you know, 94 feet that, that you have – you know, the opposing point guard looking over their shoulder, other guys wondering, okay, where's this guy at? Um, that's an unsettling feeling for, for a point guard to, to have somebody that can come after you for as long um, as Ashton can and, and pick you up full court. And he's a presence when he's off the ball. You know, coach is really working with him on, on trying to find steals, uh, get deflections off the ball, um, which is difficult for young guys. You know, in, in the process, as we talked about, is, you know, he's learning to play off the ball. He's such a menace on the ball. He's such a bulldog on the ball. Now, the work is really to, to become more, you know, effective and have a presence off the ball. You're playing a team that doesn't have a point guard, right? So, how delicious is that possibility? I mean, I, you know, I think. They have good basketball players, and however they decide to bring the ball up the floor, that's something that we'll have to, to obviously adjust to. And uh, I think Ashton's going to impose his will on the game, uh, whoever we play, you know, whether they have a point guard or whether they have a, you know, a non-traditional point guard. You know, I think that Ashton's going to be a guy that's going to, like I said, impose his will and get our team going and be disruptive. Are deflections and steals more important when you might have a little less rim protection with DJ and Reed in the back? Well, I think Coach would say, you know, the, the defense starts with the point guard. You know, and I think that if you have a guy that can get after um, the point guard and, and make him nervous, make him turn his back, turn his shoulders, now they're not running offense, you know, at a quick pace. You know, they're not getting what they want, when they want, where they want. That's something that we've worked on with our wings, with guys like Keldon, with guys like uh, Tyler, of making catches difficult. So now you've got a guy on the ball that's being disruptive. Now you've got guys generally in the areas where the first pass is you know, being entered, making it difficult. 
Um, and so you're going to get deflections there. So now teams are running their offense further away from the basket where, yeah, there's more of a time to, to react. There's more closing time when you don't have maybe the best rim protection that we've had in the past. But yeah, I think our rim protection is getting better, and I think that's why Cal keeps talking about Nick Richards as an important part of, of this team and, and the development uh, as we move forward. I think EJ's in that same boat. He has a little bit more of a knack for blocking shots, a little bit more of a thirst to do so. Um, so I think it's, it's like I said, as we take the floor today and, and ultimately you know, compete tomorrow, you want to see guys doing that and that start to catch to be disrupted. Joel, there's been a lot of talk about a lot of your guys in the gym voluntarily, extra time. How important is that in the overall process, you know, going to March? As a basketball player, you can't count on anybody else to give you confidence. And that comes from you being in the gym by yourself, with your teammates, uh, with other coaches, to where you know when you step on the floor for practice, when you step out on the floor for a game, whether it's the first offensive possession or, or the opportunity for a game-winning shot that you've put the time in. Our guys are supremely confident because they put time in. And I think that's been pretty well documented since this group got here in June. Uh, this group loves basketball. They like to watch basketball on TV. They watch themselves. They watch other players. Uh, and I think that the best basketball players, much like you might say, much the best athletes, the best you know, sports journalists have a curious mind. I'm not sure about you, Jerry, but I know the rest of the group might. You know, in terms of you always look to see, you know, how others are doing it. You know, whether it's a more seasoned veteran like yourself and a younger member of the media that is trying to do something. I think our guys are always watching NBA players. They're watching other great college players uh, to, to see how can I become my best. Or if they're doing something that works, why can't I do that? So our group is confident, but it's because they work. It's not because of Coach Cal, Coach Payne, Coach Barbie, myself, or anybody else. It's it's because they just they just work. My curious oh my mind wondered about uh, the last game. Cal afterwards didn't seem very pleased, and he pointed out several areas where execution going under the screen. How much of that is this youth, you know, evolution thing? I think it's a ton of a ton of it is you because I think that it's guys that are having to trust themselves. And I think part of confidence comes on the defensive end too. And you know, we've talked about defensive confidence here, uh, and that's the fact that you know when you step out on the floor that you can guard the basketball. We talked about being disruptive. Uh, part of that is being confident. The same way on the offensive end. Um, our guys just have to learn to, to take everything in, and I think they're doing a good job. It's just, you know, these guys are in a new situation every single time they step out. Um, it's an opponent that is wanting to beat their brains in. It's an opponent that's wanting to win for the first time against Kentucky, maybe in their career. It's a team that's trying to win at Rupp Arena. Um, and we've had to have some conversations about, our, about that, uh, about who we're playing um, and how important it is to everybody else, it, it has to become that important to us. Every single possession, not just at the end of the day. All right, thanks, folks.